Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. The newly formed cabinet took the constitutional oath before His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa at Sakhir Palace. This came as His Majesty the King was introduced to the new cabinet members by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy, Deputy Prime Ministers and Ministers took the constitutional oath before His Majesty see the king followed his royal decree yesterday. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أقسم بالله العظيم أن أكون مخلصا للوطن وللملك وأن أحترم الدستور وقوانين الدولة وأدود عن حريات الشعب ومصالحه وأمواله ونؤدي أعمالي بالأمانة والصدق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أقسم بالله العظيم أن أكون مخلصا للوطن وللملك وأن أحترم الدستور وقوانين الدولة وإذا نذود عن حريات الشعب ومصالحه وأمواله وأن أؤدي أعمالي بالأمانة والصدق يتفضل سمو الشيخ محمد بن مبارك آل خليفة لأداء القسم نائبا للرئيس مجلس الوزراء بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أقسم الله العظيم أن أكون مخلصا للوطن وللملك ونحترم الدستور وقوانين الدولة وأن أدود عن حريات الشعب ومصالحه وأمواله وأن أؤدي أعمالي بالأمانة والصدق تفضل سمو الشيخ علي بن خليفة بن سلمان آل خليفة لأداء القسم نائبا للرئيس مجلس الوزراء بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أقسم بالله العظيم أن أكون مخلصا للوطن وللملك وأن أحترم الدستور وقوانين الدولة وأن أذود عن حريات الشعب ومصالحه وأمواله وأن أدي أعمالي بالأمانة والصدق يتفضل سعادة السيد جواد بن سالم العريض لأداء القسم نائبا لرئيس مجلس الوزراء. أقسم بالله العظيم أن أكون مخلصا للوطن وللملك وأن أحترم الدستور وقوانين الدولة وأن أذود عن حريات الشعب ومصالحه وأمواله وأن أؤدي أعمالي بالأمانة والصدق. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أقسم بالله العظيم أن أكون مخلصا للوطن وللملك وأن أحترم الدستور وقوانين الدولة وأن أذود عن حريات الشعب ومصالحه وأمواله وأن أؤدي أعمالي بالأمانة والصدق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أقسم بالله العظيم أن أكون مخلصا للوطن وللملك وأن أحترم الدستور وقوانين الدولة وأن أذود عن حريات الشعب ومصالحه وأمواله وأن أؤدي أعمالي بالأمانة والصدق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أقسم بالله العظيم 
أن أكون مخلصا للوطن وللملك وأن أحترم الدستور وقوانين الدولة وأن أذود عن حريات الشعب ومصالحه وأمواله وأن أؤدي أعمالي بالأمانة والصدق يتفضل معالي الشيخ خالد بن أحمد بن محمد لأداء القسم وزير للخارجية بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أقسم بالله العظيم أن أكون مخلصا للوطن وللملك وأن أحترم الدستور وقوانين الدولة وأن أذود عن حريات الشعب ومصالحه وأمواله وأن أؤدي أعمالي بالأمانة والصدق يتفضل سعادة الدكتور ماجد بن علي المعيني لأداء القسم وزير للتربية والتعليم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أقسم بالله العظيم أن أكون مخلصا للوطن وللملك وأن أحترم الدستور وقوانين الدولة وأن أذود عن حريات الشعب ومصالحه وأمواله وأن أؤدي أعمالي بالأمانة والصدق يتفضل سعادة الدكتور عبد الحسين بن علي ميرزا لأداء القسم وزيرا لشؤون الكهرباء والماء بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أقسم بالله العظيم أن أكون مخلصا للوطن وللملك وأن أحترم الدستور وقوانين الدولة وأن أذود عن حريات الشعب ومصالحه وأمواله وأن أؤدي أعمالي بالأمانة والصدق تفضل معالي الشيخ خالد بن علي بن عبد الله لاداء القسم وزير للعدل والشؤون الاسلاميه والاوقاف. اقسم بالله العظيم ان اكون مخلصا للوطن والملك وان احترم الدستور وقوانين الدوله وان اذود عن حريات الشعب ومصالحه وامواله وان اؤدي اعمالي بالامانه والصدق. تفضل معالي الشيخ محمد بن خليفه بن احمد ال خليفه لاداء القسم وزير للنفط. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم، اقسم بالله العظيم ان اكون مخلصا للوطن وللملك وان احترم الدستور وقوانين الدوله وان ادود عن حريات الشعب ومصالحه وامواله وان اؤدي اعمالي بالامانه والصدق. تفضل معالي الشيخ سلمان بن خليفه بن سلمان ال خليفه لاداء الغسل وزيرا للماليه والاقتصاد الوطني. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. اقسم بالله العظيم ان اكون مخلصا للوطن وللملك وان احترم الدستور وقوانين الدوله وان اذود عن حريات الشعب ومصالحه وامواله وان اؤدي اعمالي بالامانه والصدق. يتفضل سعادة السيد عصام بن عبد الله خلف لأداء الغسل وزيرا للأشغال وشؤون البلديات والتخطيط العمراني. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أقسم بالله العظيم أن أكون مخلصا للوطن وللملك وأن أحترم الدستور وقوانين الدولة وأن أذود عن حريات الشعب ومصالحه وأمواله وأن أؤدي أعمالي بالأمانة والصد. يتفضل سعادة السيد جميل بن محمد حميدان لأداء القسم وزيرا للعمل والتنمية الاجتماعية. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. أقسم بالله العظيم أن أكون مخلصا للوطن وللملك وأن أحترم الدستور وقوانين الدولة وأن أذود عن حريات الشعب ومصالحه وأمواله وأن أؤدي أعمالي بالأمانة والصدق. تفضل سعادة السيد كمال بن أحمد محمد لأداء القسم وزيرا للمواصلات والاتصالات. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم، أقسم بالله العظيم أن أكون مخلصا للوطن وللملك، وأن أحترم بالدستور وقوانين الدولة، وأن أذول عن حريات الشعب ومصالحه وأمواله، وأن أؤدي أعمالي بالأمانة والصدق. يتفضل سعادة السيد باسم بن يعقوب الحمر لأداء القسم وزيرا للإسكان. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. 
أقسم بالله العظيم أن أكون مخلصا للوطن وللملك وأن أحترم الدستور وقوانين الدولة وأن أذود عن حريات الشعب ومصالحه وأمواله وأن أؤدي أعمالي بالأمانة والصدق يتفضل سعادة سيد غانم بن فضل بعينين لأداء الأسد وزير الشؤون بجلسي الشورى والنواب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أقسم بالله العظيم أن أكون مخلصاً للوطن وللملك وأن أحترم الدستور وقوانين الدولة وأن أذود عن حريات الشعب ومصالحه وأمواله وأن أؤدي أعمالي بالأمانة والصدق تفضل السيدة فائقة بتسعيد الصالح يداء الأسم وزيرة للصحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أقسم بالله العظيم أن أكون مخلصة للوطن وللملك وأن أحترم الدستور وقوانين الدولة وأن أذود عن حريات الشعب ومصالحه وأمواله وأن أؤدي أعمالي بالأمانة والصدق يتفضل سعادة السيد زايد بن راشد الزياني لأداء القسم وزير الصناعة والتجارة والسياحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أقسم بالله العظيم أن أكون مخلصا للوطن والملك وأن أحترم الدستور وقوانين الدولة وأن أذود عن حريات الشعب ومصالحه وأمواله وأن أؤدي أعمالي بالأمانة والصدق يتفضل سعادة سيد علي بن محمد الرميحي لأداء القسم وزير لشؤون الإعلام بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أقسم بالله العظيم أن أكون مخلصا للوطن وللملك وأن أحترم الدستور وقوانين الدولة وأن أدود عن حريات الشعب ومصالحه وأمواله وأن أؤدي أعمالي بالأمانة والصدق يتفضل سعادة اللواء الركن عبد الله بن حسن عيمي لأداء القسم وزيرا لشؤون الدفاع بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أقسم بالله العظيم أن أكون مخلصا للوطن والملك وأن أحترم الدستور وقوانين الدولة وأن أذود عن حريات الشعب ومصالحه وأمواله وأن أؤدي أعمالي بالأمانة والصدق يتفضل السيد أيمن توفيق المؤيد لأداء الغسل وزيرا لشؤون الشباب والرياضة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أقسم بالله العظيم أن أكون مخلصا للوطن وللملك وأن أحترم الدستور وقوانين الدولة وأن أذود عن حريات الشعب ومصالحه وأمواله وأن أؤدي أعمالي بالأمانة والصدق. His Majesty the King then delivered the following speech. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صاحب السمو الملكي العم العزيز الأمير خليفة بن سلمان الخليفة رئيس مجلس الوزراء صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة ولي العهد والنائب الأول لرئيس مجلس الوزراء أصحاب المعالي والسعادة الوزراء السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يطيب لنا بداية أن نرحب بالجميع وأن نهنئ رئيس وأعضاء الحكومة الموقرة بمناسبة تشكيلها الجديد استعدادا لمرحلة العمل القادمة ويأتي تكليفكم هذا مع قرب انعقاد الفصل التشريعي الخامس الذي نتطلع خلاله إلى تحقيق المزيد من الإنجازات بما يلبي تطلعاتنا الوطنية لبحرين المستقبل وطموحاتنا التي لا حدود لها لرفعة شعبنا الوفي واستمرار تمتعه بالحياة الكريمة وحصول على الخدمات اللائقة مع تحقيق التوازن المالي المطلوب للارتقاء باقتصادنا الوطني كما نود بهذه المناسبة أن نشكر أعضاء الحكومة السابقة الذين نكن لهم كل التقدير لما قاموا به من جهود مخلصة 
ولما قدموه من أعمال جليلة ستكون على الدوال محل اعتزازنا فلهم منا خالص التمنيات باستمرار عطائهم الكريم اتجاه البحرين العزيزة وفي الختام نسأل المولى عز وجل أن يبارك لكم مساعيكم وأن يوفقكم في حمل مسؤولياتكم التي أقسمتم على أدائها بالوجه الأكمل لخدمة الوطن والمواطنين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa affirmed the keenness of the government to continue achieving the directives of His Majesty the King. He expressed pride in His Majesty's gratitude towards him in assuming the responsibility as the Prime Minister, which motivates to achieve a better future for the kingdom and its people. He affirmed that the government treats the people of Bahrain as top priority and works to achieve their aspirations to achieve further progress. Then commemorative photographs were taken on the occasion followed by the national anthem. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace the U.S. Vice Chief of Naval Operation Admiral William Francis Moron. His Majesty welcomed the Admiral and expressed pride in the deep-rooted historic relations and partnership between Bahrain and the U.S., which is based on trust, mutual respect and cooperation to serve common goals and interests. His Majesty hailed the development of these relations, especially in the military and defense fields. He expressed his deepest condolences on the demise of the commander of the U.S. Naval Forces Central Command and the U.S. Fifth Fleet Vice Admiral Scott Sterney, recalling his contributions in enhancing the cooperation between the two countries. His Majesty asked them to convey his appreciation and condolences to all the members of the Fifth Fleet. During the meeting, they exchanged views on issues of mutual interest at the regional and international levels and discussed the latest developments in the region. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace the family of the late Vice Admiral Scott Sterney, Commander of U.S. Naval Forces Central Command and the U.S. Fifth Fleet. His Majesty expressed sincere condolences to the family of the deceased and praised his efforts and contributions in enhancing the relations between Bahrain and the U.S. His Majesty asked the family to convey his condolences to the rest of the family of the deceased and his friends. The family of the late Vice Admiral Admiral expressed gratitude to His Majesty the King and wished the Kingdom of Bahrain further progress and prosperity.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received a telephone call from the Prime Minister of Kuwait Sheikh Jaber Al Mubarak Al Subah who congratulated His Royal Highness regarding the new cabinet formation. He praised the efforts of His Royal Highness in achieving development in the kingdom which resulted in the advancements in many fields. He wished His Royal Highness abundant health and happiness and for the kingdom of Bahrain further progress and prosperity. In reply, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister expressed thanks and appreciation to the Prime Minister of Kuwait and praised the bilateral relations, wishing Kuwait further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa held a telephone call with the Deputy President of the National Guard of Kuwait, Sheikh Mish'al Al Ahmad Al Subah, and congratulated him on receiving a Medal of Honor from France. His Royal Highness praised his efforts in developing the military sector in Kuwait, wishing him abundant health and happiness. In reply, Sheikh Mish'al expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness, praising his keenness in strengthening the bilateral relations, wishing Bahrain further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa hailed the strong bilateral relations between Bahrain and Thailand. He extended congratulations to Thai King Mahavajira Longkorn, Prime Minister General Prayut Chanocha, and the friendly Thai people on their country's National Day, wishing them further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness made this statement as he attended a ceremony marking the Thai National Day. Thai Ambassador to the Kingdom Tanis Na Songkhla hosted the ceremony, which was attended by senior officials, ambassadors accredited to Bahrain, journalists, media figures, and invitees. His Royal Highness stressed his keenness on attending the ceremony, hailing the strong bilateral relations. He hailed the advanced level of cooperation between both countries in all fields, wishing reflects, which reflects outstanding bilateral relations based on understanding and mutual respect. He reiterated Bahrain's keenness on expanding the scope of cooperation operation in various sectors to consolidate joint partnership and meet shared aspirations between the two countries and peoples. He recalled the successful visit of the Thai Prime Minister to Bahrain last year, hailing the outstanding results which consolidated bilateral relations. His Royal Highness hailed the role of the Thai community in supporting development in the kingdom, expressing respect and appreciation to their dedicated efforts. The Thai Ambassador thanked His Royal Highness for attending the ceremony hailing his keenness on strengthening joint cooperation. He reiterated his country's keenness on expanding this aspects of cooperation with the kingdom for the sake of the two countries and peoples.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received members of the American Jewish Co Committee at Qudaybiyah Palace. His Royal Highness welcomed AGC's visit and emphasized the importance of building bridges among cultures and faiths. He highlighted the long-standing Bahrain-US ties, underpinned by a joint and growing commitment to further advance cooperation at all levels. His Royal Highness noted the close ties between citizens, which further reinforced the cultural exchange between the two nations in line with His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's efforts in promoting the principles of diversity and mutual respect. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmad Al Khalifa, attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met the Chairman and Managing Director of Lulu Group International, Yusuf Ali, at Qudaybiya Palace. His Royal Highness emphasized Bahrain's efforts to further increase the private sector's contribution to the economy in a dynamic and competitive environment. He also highlighted the Kingdom's policies towards the continuous development of efficient regulation and forward-looking innovation as enabling mechanisms of economic growth. Yusuf Ali expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness. Yesterday, the 7th Lulu Hypermarket in Bahrain was officially inaugurated under the patronage of Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and in the presence of several ministers and senior officials. Located in Saar, close to the Saudi Bahrain Causeway, the sprawling 100,000 square feet new hypermarket has been designed using the latest retail space concepts and most modern technology for ease of shopping and display. It will serve residents of Budaya, Hamala, Saar, and Janibiyah and is also well positioned to cater to visitors from Saudi Arabia across the border. Chairman and Managing Director of Lulu Group Yusuf Ali said that the opening of the 156th Lulu Hypermarket, which is the seventh in the country, is a moment of great pride, which is a sign of our steady confidence in the bright future of Bahrain and the commitment to be a part of the progress of the kingdom. Today we opened our seventh one and we invested 125 million up to time and 1,400 Bahraini employees with us. They are very hard working, dedicated and I promised to take 2,000 Bahraini staff. Inshallah, when we fill this 10 hypermarkets, we will employ 2,000 Bahraini staff. We are very happy and thankful to His Majesty and His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister and Crown Prince and the government for their all support and the full support also for giving opportunity for us to increase our investment and increase our business and also to employ more our Bahraini staff. Under the patronage of Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmad Al Khalifa, the Minister of the Royal Court, a joint research event co-hosted by the King Hamad University Hospital Research Center, RCSI Bahrain, and the University of Bahrain. The event aims to provide academics, students, medics, and healthcare professionals a platform to learn from each other, gain insights, create opportunities for joint research opportunities, and support the enhancement of medical and healthcare services in the kingdom. Ten researchers were awarded the Dr. Muhammad Research Prize, which aims to encourage research and prompt the ultimate growth and development in the Arab health and medical services sector. I'm very glad actually to have to be in this uh, meeting and this meeting actually is the first time in the Bahrain to arrange such a big conference actually participating three uh, institutes which are actually doing their uh, research and uh, you know encouraging their efforts. Before we used to have one uh, institute which is Bahrain Medical Bulletin, but uh, Today we have the three. Well, actually we have, you know, selected, uh, you know, uh, research from these three institutes, ten from each, and that's uh, give you how much other, uh, you know, research has been done. This actually is very important, and I think that we should have its uh, right in the media. Actually, to everybody should know what's happening in Bahrain, and I think they should encourage it. And the next year we should make it a much more bigger festival than this year. Uh, the whole, this initiative uh, actually started 11 years ago by Dr. Muhammad, 
to um, celebrate research or, or the best research that has been published. This is 11 years ago. And then he actually uh, gave the prizes from his own uh, finance. And uh, this year is different. We call it Bahrain Research Day because Bahrain University has approached us and also the uh, Royal College of Surgeons to participate. They, therefore, it's been called Bahrain Research Day. I am very delighted uh, to win a prize uh, uh, in this uh, event, which means a lot because it gives us uh, a lot of uh, opportunity and courage to carry on with the research process uh, in Bahrain, which is uh, an important issue even worldwide to, to carry on <coughs> with the research projects, uh, especially the medical research. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmad bin Muhammad Al Khalifa, visited today the Ambassador of the United States of the Kingdom of Bahrain, Justin Sebril, in his place of residence at the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Minister expressed condolences on the demise of the Commander of U.S. Naval Forces Central Command and the U.S. Fifth Fleet Vice Admiral Scott Sterney, who has recently passed away in Bahrain. The Minister of Foreign Affairs extended his sincere condolences to the family of the late Vice Admiral Scott Sterney, praising his dedicated efforts to enhance the bilateral relations between Bahrain and the United States and develop their joint cooperation at all levels. Minister of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning, Hassan bin Abdullah Khalaf, attended the swearing ceremony for the President and members of the Capital Municipality in the Municipal Council's first session. The Minister congratulated the President and members of the Municipality for earning His Majesty's confidence and being appointed in accordance with the Royal Decree to form the Capital's Municipal Council. The Minister also stated that this appointment reflects a keenness to improve the standards of services in Bahrain in general and in the Capital in particular. For his part, President of the Capital Municipality, Saleh Tahar Tarada, affirmed that the Council will continue to carry out developmental projects, continue the outgoing Council's decisions and projects, and pursue new ones in a carefully planned manner. Under the patronage of the Minister of Labor, Jamil Hamaidan, Yusuf bin Ahmad Kanu Company organized a ceremony this morning to launch the distribution of the Holy Quran in Braille among a number of people with visual disabilities. More in this report. <laughs> Coinciding with the International Day of Persons with Disabilities, the distribution of the Braille Holy Quran is a breakthrough by Yusuf bin Ahmad Kanu Company. Offering a distinctive service for people with visual disabilities, the first of its kind in Bahrain, in order to compensate them for the loss of the blessing of sight and enable them to rely on themselves in reading, understanding and memorizing the Holy Quran. In the presence of members of the Ministry of Labor and Social Development, the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, members of the Board of Directors of the Saudi Bahraini Institute for the Blind and members of the Board of Directors of the Friendship Society for the Blind, the Minister of Labor pointed out in his speech that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa pays special attention to the people with visual disabilities and strives all entities to provide them with all means aiding their spiritual and intellectual advancement and integration into society. He added that the ministry is keen to enhance the service, rehabilitation and sponsorship of the visually impaired in coordination with various governmental and private institutions. We looked into it and we realized that there are no Qur'ans in Bahrain that are for the blind uh, with the braille. So that's how it started. Then we started to investigate how could we get uh, the Qur'an from where, are they a reliable source and then bit by bit and uh, finally after six months or five months we finally got them and today was the launch of uh, the Quran uh, for all the societies that have 
people with vision uh, issues. In order to expand the impact of the social and humanitarian approach, distribution of copies will not only be in Bahrain, but also in Saudi Arabia. Under the directives of the personal representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Chairman of Bahrain Olympic Committee, Zainal Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and under the Team Bahrain Framework, the Minister of Youth and Sports, Ayman Tawfiq Al Muayyad, along with former Minister of Youth and Sports, Hisham Al Jodar, held a tour across the ministry. During the tour, the minister and the former minister met the ministry staff and were briefed on their tasks, duties, and the services they provided to the members of the youth and sports sector. Al Muayyad praised the efforts exerted by Al Jodar during his term and hailed his initiative that contributed to enhancing the youth and sports march in the kingdom. He also praised the efforts of the staff in the ministry in implementing the ministry's strategies in order to achieve further progress and provide high quality services to all clients. Under the patronage of Her Highness Sheikh Hissa Khalifa Al Khalifa, Chairwoman of Injaz Bahrain, an award ceremony was held to honor the victory of Royal University for Women Team Da'awun, who has represented Bahrain in the 12th Annual Young Entrepreneurs Competition held in Kuwait and won the Product of the Year Award. The honoring ceremony took place at the Royal University for Women campus located in West Rifa'a. The event started with a speech by Her Highness Sheikh Hissa in which she expressed her honor and Pride to commend the remarkable efforts of the students, congratulating the winning team, wishing them further success in the future. She also lauded the powerful potentials of the Bahraini youth, whose tangible achievements will contribute in the kingdom's bright and optimistic future. A speech was followed by acting president of the Royal University for Women, Dr. David Stewart, in which he expressed his pride in the winning team's members and their achievement in this important regional competition. He also noted spreading the culture of entrepreneurship in RUW by offering a course for students in this regard, not to mention the Entrepreneurship Week that is annually held, where the students obtain the skills for creating innovative ideas and translate them into action plans and unique projects. He stated that this victory is the fruit of the hard work done by RUW students. The Royal University for Women has also won the national competition of Indaz Bahrain in the category of best company university level for two years in a row. Jazz Bahrain provides many opportunities for young people to succeed economically and in the area of entrepreneurship. Now, the Kingdom of Bahrain and all universities in the kingdom should be very pr proud and fortunate and thankful to Injaz Bahrain and Her Highness Sheikh Hessa bin Khalifa for providing this opportunity. We at RUW, of course, are very proud that our team won the competition for the best award of the year in 2018 in Kuwait, and we'd like to extend our congratulations to our students, and we are very, very proud of their success. Yeah, I would like to take this uh, heartful opportunity in order to thank Sheikh Hassa Al Khalifa for this opportunity as well as for it has enhanced many skills in us, many entrepreneurial skills, communication skills, and we would also like to thank our mentors for their time, effort, and their patience with us for it has also taught us how to keep the team spirit alive and also uh, great teamwork. Under the patronage of the President of the University of Bahrain, Dr. Riyad Yusuf Hamza and the organized by United Nations Industrial Development Organization, UNIDO Bahrain, in cooperation with the Supreme Council for Environment and Bahrain Center for Strategic International and Energy Studies, Dirasat, the fourth UNIDO International Green Industry condensed course under the title Green Industrial Development Pathways Towards a Circular Economy concludes today with the participation of 46 experts from 17 countries. Our support to the International Green Industry course held here at the University of Bahrain stems from our commitment in Dirasa, the Bahrain Center for Strategic International and Energy Studies, to support green industry in Bahrain. It also stems from our commitment to the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, we are very proud of the uh, ongoing partnership with the University of Bahrain, but also with the Supreme Council for the Environment and uh, with the ITPO office of the uh, UNIDO. Uh, we have seen how there's more and more interest from the international community to participate in this course. We're talking today about how we can reduce the CO2 emissions on the air using the industries. We need to improve our own industries locally and to improve the efficiencies. 
plus improve um, the quality of the air that those industries are producing. It doesn't talk about this only, this workshop, it talks about also how we are dealing with the waste, reducing the amount of waste, improving the energy efficiencies, and looking at the alternative energies like the solar energies. Experts from different parts of the world, you know, to inform them about the future challenges of green economy. Of course, this year we're focusing on the green industry, the pathway to circular economy, which means uh, we should uh, we're informing the participants on the challenges, the difficulties, the way they ahead to develop businesses related to green industry, which will solve the problem of the environment, but this will open a big door also for entrepreneurs to start their businesses. We learned more about eco-design, circular economy, a lot of the policies that could be implemented. We had a lot of case studies from Wales, from Bahrain, from Taiwan as well, um, that demonstrates the use of um, sort of circular economy as well. The General Directorate of Information and Communication Security at the Information and E-Government Authority organized the third meeting of the Information Security Falcons in the presence of 75 employees in the field of information technology. More on this report with Shoga Mohammed. The Information Security Falcons initiative was launched by the General Directorate of Information and Communication Security at the Information and E-Government Authority to better coordinate between government institutions and the exchange of security expertise and information. One of the most common security applications is the exchange of information on ongoing security threats. The exchange of experiences contributes to the development of local skills and competencies, which increases their capabilities in monitoring the network and detecting and responding to security threats. The main objective for the meeting is that, uh, as you know, that information security is uh, a shared responsibility from all entities. So the main, uh, the main purpose of that meeting is that to have everyone that to know their responsibilities to protect the asset, a critical asset, and to minimize any threat risk for the government. The initiative also looks forward to its future objectives to increase the awareness of government information security specialists in conjunction with the development of security surveillance and immediate response to any attempt to penetrate government bodies. During the meeting, the participants discussed real and realistic experiences aimed at enhancing the knowledge of the attendees about the dangers and prevention of them and how to best deal in case they occur. The main breakthroughs and methods of prevention were also reviewed, as well as the most important security controls and future projects reviewed by a number of cybersecurity specialists, in addition to informing the attendees about the services provided by the public administration in this regard. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Shogh Mohammed. Bahrain Bayan School was selected to be the first school to represent and launch the Guiding Light campaign using thousands of solar lanterns to create and light up the logo of the Zayed Sustainability Prize. After the event, the solar lanterns will be donated to beneficiaries in need of off-grid solar-powered lighting. The campaign will take place from the 5th of December to the 9th of January and will highlight the philanthropic and humanitarian actions of the UAE's Pioneering Global Sustainability Award. By winning the Zaid Future Energy Prize, the school developed a learning platform called Ecolab 360. The platform aims to educate students and surrounding community on sustainable practices and technologies, focusing on reducing, reusing, recycling, raising awareness and renewing energy. The Bahrain Bayan School Victory represents the kingdom's vision in maintaining a sustainable future built on the motivations of youth. So the Sheikh Zayed Future Energy Prize, uh, which is now called the Sheikh Zayed Sustainability Prize, was initially a program or prize set or established by UAE rulers uh, to honor the late Sheikh Zayed Al Nahyan. Uh, given that he was a steward for sustainability and the environment. He was always fond with sustainability and going green, being efficient with what we have at our disposal from resources, just to save energy and be, <clears throat> be more efficient in the long run to avoid environmental problems. And uh, as eco-boosters of the Bahrain Bayan School, we would like to carry on with this legacy and reflect on his initiative as well as his stewardness, such to ensure that we, in the long run, waste less resources, become more sustainable and turn his vision into a reality. The Ecolab 360 is a project we, we made to uh, have uh, all the wastes 
uh, energy and water be completely sustainable in our school. Everything is going to be used to its full potential for our primary school cafeteria. Um, nothing is going to go to waste, so it's uh, it's called 360 because everything is going to go back. It's a circle. Nothing is going to be used. Uh, go. Uh, nothing is going to go to waste. So we're going to use everything to produce energy for the. Um, for the cafeteria, uh, we're gonna, we, we're aiming to have 80% of the energy be produced by the Ecolab, and all the water and uh, food waste from the um, cafeteria is gonna be uh, used uh, as uh, as co compost, biodiesel, uh, biogas. Everything is gonna be um, reused for something to um, be sustainable. We would like to thank our executive director, Dr. Sheikh Hamay bin Suleiman Al Atabi, for her dynamic leadership and vision. This has helped us work towards sustainability and become role models for Bahrain and the world. It's an absolute honor to be here in Manama Al Bahrain uh, for the launch of the Guiding Light campaign for the Zayed Sustainability Prize. And we're here with the school that won the prize last year. So it just goes to show when a prize like the Zayed Sustainability Prize is out there to engage youth, to promote youth to do something, they shine their light bright and they make changes in this world. And it just goes to show how empowering youth today is probably the best answer for the future, inshallah. Bahrain's economic delegation concluded its official visit to the Republic of India, organized by the Bahrain Economic Development Board this week to promote investment opportunities in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Bahraini delegation included officials from the EDB, the Central Bank of Bahrain, and representatives of the private sector. During the visit, the EDB organized a business forum which formed an important interactive platform for delegation members to discuss opportunities with around 100 Indian investors and sector representatives. The delegation sought to enhance the bilateral investment relations between Bahrain and India by promoting the kingdom's investment opportunities in the financial services, financial technology and real estate sectors as the kingdom is the ideal gateway to the Gulf market worth 1.5 trillion US dollars. The visit is part of the EDB's efforts to attract investments to the kingdom to contribute to the creation of jobs in the local market in 2005. 14. The Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism and the EDB coordinated the visit of an economic trade delegation to India to encourage investment between the two countries, coinciding with the historic visit of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The visit saw the signing of an agreement between the EDB and the Indian state of Maharashtra to create a framework for cooperation in the promotion of innovation in financial technology and to provide mutual support to the financial technology environment through the training programs.